Nat, and here is the little mess I got myself into. Back in August 2019, I went on a camping trip with my friend Veronica and her dad, and this was right after I got into this whole vertical farming thing. I spent the car ride back pitching this lettuce aeroponics idea project to Veronica's dad, who hated it. We rallied back and forth about cost effectiveness and then just general efficiency when I said six cursed words. You can grow pumpkins with it, it being aeroponics slash hydroponics, and you can. Jeb the Gardener did it with hydroponics, link to that in the description. So it really wouldn't be too difficult to replicate his results, at least that's what I thought, with a fogger and a Home Depot bucket. So we ended up making a bet along the lines of this. I had to grow him a fully, like a full, like a legitimately sized watermelon before the following summer started. And here's how that went. This was the plan. Five gallon Home Depot bucket on the bottom. This would act as a reservoir, which would hold the water and plant food. An ultrasonic fogger, which is just a glorified mist maker, would float in the bucket and turn that solution into vapor for the hanging plant roots to eat. This atomized water increases how efficiently the nutrients and water are absorbed by the plant, which in turn increases growth speed and decreases water waste. Something Veronica's dad kept talking about was humidity and temperature in reference to watermelon needs, but I decided that I was going to worry about that later and just stick with the base setup for now. The first step was to figure out how to make the fogger float. To do this, I cut a foam donut with a hole in the middle for a net pot. This net pot always holds the fogger two inches below the water level, which means that the fogger can keep running no matter how filled the reservoir is. It took a little trial and error, but I got the donut indent just right for it to work. Next, I drilled two holes into the Home Depot bucket, a small side one and a big lid one. The small hole was for the fogger wire and the big hole was to hold the watermelon seedling. For sprouting, all you have to do is put a couple seeds into two blocks of rock fiber, pop them on the windowsill, and wait about two weeks. Wow! Even better than mama! Now you have a watermelon baby, all set to go. I gently removed him from his rotisserie chicken water bath and transferred him to a net pot that went in that big lid hole. At this point, I still did not have a real way to provide light to Mr. Watermelon, so I just taped him in a cup, put an LED roll on top, and hoped for the best. My first idea for the light setup was this hexagonal fence around the watermelon with half inch PVC pipe pieces. After spending about three hours duct taping and cutting, I realized it was garbage and chucked it. The better idea was to stop cheaping out and just attach those leftover 10 inch long PVC pipe pieces together with elbow connectors, which was exactly what I did. The next step was to attach the LED strip. Originally, I was going to have the strip going down every possible inner edge of the cube, but these LEDs were not sticky enough to handle gravity. Instead, I just cut three strips for the top edges and put them at an angle that aligned about with where the plant was. For some reason, probably because I went all frugal on this, the potential fourth strip would just never consistently light up, despite all the connectors and positions that I tried. Once all that was done, I cut up some super reflective film and taped that thoroughly onto the cube. Two weeks of the ratchet setup and now I could finally upgrade. Another thorough tape job later and the whole setup was finished. I had the fogger working on a half hour on, half hour off basis and the LEDs on for 9 hours every day, which both operated on timers. At the start, everything was perfect. Mr. Watermelon was literally glowing in his LED cube and I had my whole speech planned for when I'd be handing off his fully grown form to Veronica's dad. However, about three days later, the watermelon's left leaf began to curl and I went into panic mode. I refreshed the solution and when that didn't do anything for about a day, I started googling. The internet said that this kind of curling is usually a result of poor air circulation or too much sun exposure. I cut open the top layer of the mylar wrapping for some airflow, but it was too late. The next morning, Mr. Watermelon was dead.
hindsight, I'm guessing that the problem that I was having was not really as much of an issue with air circulation or too much light. Honestly, it was just the fact that I went from a really small humidity chamber to a really big one. Even though I had all these fancy lights and this mylar, that doesn't compensate for just the fact that the humidity levels plummeted the instant I put that watermelon in the new contraption. And that's on me. <laughs> I probably should have figured out a more slick way to do that, or honestly just... I don't know. Like, that just wasn't a smart sequence of steps for me, and I'm gonna factor that in for the next design. Veronica, if you're watching this now, please apologize to your father for me. I promised him a watermelon by the summer, and he's not gonna get one, let's be honest. <laughs> it's kind of too late at this point, given the fact that it's uh, mid-April, well, past mid-April. Almost the end of April. I don't know what day it is. I procrastinated really hard on this project, not because I really wanted to, it was just like a, it was in the back of my mind, so I didn't really start until it was too late. And yeah, I had nine months to do it, and sorry, <laughs> please apologize to him. I'm not giving up though. Like, your dad's gonna laugh at me. He already has laughed at me. Like, I called you when the watermelon died the first time, the, the time that it died, there's no second time yet. Um, and he laughed at me and I know, I know, I'm a clown. <laughs> I understand how it comes off that I am a clown and a little bit, a little bit I am, but I'm not giving up on this project. Your father will get a watermelon fully grown inside my house eventually. I don't know when, maybe the next one I <laughs> will work. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping a positive attitude about it. I think it's cool that I actually sat down and made the whole thing, and I have a Mylar cube attached to a Home Depot bucket just sitting in the corner of my room. I mean, I'm glad it's there. The end result was still useful. Even though the watermelon contraption itself is on pause, I'm actually using the floater device that I made for another project, because it's just simple, you carry it over, it works, and that's been working great so far. Well, I mean, you'll see. <laughs> There's gonna be a video on that too. Um, so yeah, thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, feel free to smash the like button, hit subscribe, and also tap the notifications bell. Which feel I like saying that. This is my first video, and I don't know. It's cool to say. It's cool that I am the one saying that for once. If you have any advice whatsoever, or if you just want to roast me, please, 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 please comment. Um, I will take any help that I can get. I am looking forward to the day where I can intro a video and be like, hi, I'm Natalie, your local vertical farming expert. But that day has not come yet. If it takes getting flame to fully grow this watermelon, well, I think that's worth the cost. And if you guys help out, we all grow better together. So since I was so camera shy, I kind of forgot to talk about the future of the watermelon project, besides reassuring you, the viewer, that there would in fact be a future. To get to the 10 minute mark, let's go through what worked and what I'm going to do next time. Right off the bat, the flotation device was rock solid. I'm really happy this worked out actually. The only complaint I have is that over time, the foam seems to crumble and pollute the water a little, but it's not that big of an issue. To adjust air circulation, I'm considering installing too many computer fans into the sides of the Mylar cube. Not sure how I'd do this and if it would completely obliterate humidity levels, but this could be useful in the longer term in preventing musty air and depleted CO2 levels. The lighting in the setup was questionable. Even with all that Mylar, only having three LED strips was really suspect, especially considering that there were times where I found the third one just not working. I'm thinking of integrating an LED panel at the top of the Mylar cube, but I'm not quite sure how I'd handle that panel heating up yet. Special thank you to Veronica for being a day one and agreeing to be in this video, her dad for egging me on, my family for dealing with my vertical farming and YouTube shenanigans, Sasha and Juliana for helping me film, Eileen for being my first subscriber in Comedy Police, my friends for emotionally supporting me, and once again, if you are still watching, you! I genuinely appreciate that you've taken some time out of your day to watch this train wreck that I've spent the last couple months working on. Have a great day. Missing someone.